Hello, and thank you for joining us for our third virtual version of Dialogues on Design. I'm David Sproles, the president of the New York School of Interior Design. In a moment, you'll hear from Dennis Scully, the host of the Business of Home podcast, who joins us again as the curator of these programs. He'll be joined by the talented and bold designer, Corey Damon Jenkins. Before that happens, I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of the donors who have already given to support NYSID scholarship funds. Our students are facing unprecedented health and job market challenges head on, and we've been amazed by their resolve and hard work. Unfortunately, many are experiencing unforeseen financial difficulties, which could impact their education. All donations for Dialogues on Design go directly to our general scholarship fund, as well as our diversity scholarship fund to assist these talented students with their studies. I'd also like to thank those who have sponsored this season of Dialogues on Design. Benjamin Moore, Kate Brodsky, Susan Zeises Green, Alexa Hampton, Holly Hunt, Dennis Miller, Betsy Ruprecht, Maria Spears, Newell Turner, Kelly Williams, and The Shade Store. Please know your generosity is greatly appreciated, not just by me, but also the students you are helping. Thank you. And now, please enjoy this dialogue between Dennis Scully and Corey Damon Jenkins, who I should mention will be the recipient of the Larry Kravitz Design Leadership Award at the college's annual gala, virtual this year, to be aired on April 27. Tickets are still available if you'd like to join us. Dennis, Corey, all yours. Thank you, David, and welcome everyone to another installment of our Dialogues on Design series. Tonight we have with us the talented and charming interior designer, Corey Damon Jenkins. I'm thrilled to have him. He's going to be talking with us about his upcoming book and some projects that he's got going on and share with us a little bit of how he approaches his design work. I know you're going to really enjoy this conversation. Corey, welcome. A pleasure to have you. Hello, my friend. How are you? <laughs> I am I am great. Good All the better you. for seeing you as always. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, I'm I'm incredibly excited to have you. And I feel like so often in the past, when I have introduced you, it was always the rising star, Corey Damon Jenkins. But you are you are rising star no more, my friend. You you are on the AD one hundred list. So I, I um. think you're you're just star now. Well, thank you. I'm still only five foot nine, so not much change <laughs> as far as my actual height and rising. But I'm, it's been a very exciting year, and uh, with eighty one hundred and Elder Core A list, it's been a, a mind blowing, exciting uh, trajectory we've been on. So I'm just glad to be here to see it, and just literally still reeling from all of that great news. So it's great. Well, and, and and it really has been an incredible year for you, and 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 so much has been been going on. How are you? How are you sort of managing all of the all of the back and forth and sort of a, a very busy practice that you have right now? Well, you know, this past year, twenty twenty, was such a tumultuous year for so many reasons. We had obviously this global pandemic that shut down our entire planet unanimously, it seemed, at one point. And then uh, we had the social unrest. We had the economic fallout from the shutdown. And so um, there's a lot of emotional whiplash that I know myself and so many of my colleagues and friends in the industry and our clients and whatnot all experienced uh, during 2020. Um, but I think that the way how the universe or God, however you view things, uh, the way how that works is that for every negative, there's often a positive reaction. And so uh, being inducted to the AD 100 and, you know, being uh, added to the Elder Core A-list, you know, those were much needed and certainly unexpected um, <laughs> in what was a very dark yeah. year. Yeah. And uh, now it's just a matter of making sure that our firm lives up to it. Um, we take that uh, those honors and those prestigious distinctions very seriously. It's a very uh, lovely and amazing uh, and, um, and deeply respected honor. Uh, and now we have to continue to, to produce the work, you know, that is worthy of that type of distinction. So my staff will tell you that I've been cracking the whip a little <laughs> harder in the last few months, uh, making sure that everything is editorial. It all has to be editorial. Level. Editorial. Editorial. <laughs> editorial. It's Every project story. needs Don't to be to <laughs> print worthy. Yes. I'm telling yeah. you, you're looking more and more like the devil wears Prada with Miranda Priestley. I'm like, oh, florals in spring. 
Groundbreaking. Oh, <laughs> velvet on chairs. Groundbreaking. Bring me something else. You know? so, oh, no. Yeah, I'm not that mean. But, <laughs> but yeah, the bar has been raised. But we have to make sure that we continue to rise to meet that moment. So we're very honored and, and happy to be in that position. Well, uh, and anyone that knows you knows that you worked incredibly hard to 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 get to where you are now. And 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 for those who might be tuning in, students who might not yet be familiar with your with your work or your story, uh, and and anyone who is looking to to be inspired by someone's uh, sort of stick to itiveness and, and and grit. Uh, I, I think your your story is, is definitely one that that I often point to and and refer to to people in the industry. Tell people uh, just a little bit of sort of how you how you came to design and and give them a a little bit of your your background for for context. Well, you know, we you and I talked about this in the past about how I launched my firm during the Great Recession, and um, mm -hmm. I had a great illustrious career, nice chunky salary, the fancy <laughs> condo, the beautiful you know emerald green sedan, and you know the high lifestyle that you know most you know, you know twenty and thirty year olds are, are are aspiring to achieve. And then you know we had the great crash. I mean, it kind of fell apart, and in Michigan, which is where I was based initially. Our main bread and butter is making cars. And so when that automotive industry took that hit, everything kind of collapsed along with it. And so I lost my job of 10 years. Uh, I was hoping to maintain that position and continue this upwardly mobile trajectory in the company until I retired. And that dream was kind of snatched from me. And so um, I decided to launch my own design firm. Um, but one thing I did not share on your show before that I'll share with you now, there was ah, a little anecdote. So I'm going to okay. give you a little special um, okay. uh, st story that kind of took place between the time I started knocking on doors and uh, when I lost my job. I took on a position working as a stock boy at Robert Allen Beacon Hill at one of their showrooms in Troy, Michigan. And that's not a commonly known story. I haven't shared too much of that. But when I approached Robert Allen about working in their showroom, um, they thought it was too, you know, too qualified for my resume to take on this job, which entailed Dennis changing light bulbs, taking out the trash, literally taking out the trash, wiping down mirrors, moving furniture, packing up artwork, putting that in furnishings into designers' cars, uh, giving out memo, memo samples, fabric samples. Um, I was happy to take the job to get off the employment line. And during that time, I got a chance to, you know, serve and wait on many designers in the industry, some of whom were very uh, nice, some of whom were very <laughs> Some of whom were nice. <laughs> <laughs> some of whom were very nice, right. a few of whom were very, you know, snobby and condescending. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decided to go ahead and launch my own firm, uh, which involved me literally knocking on 779 doors to find my first client. I remember attending a, a magazine award ceremony and I wasn't up for anything. I just wanted to be in the crowd, in the room with people who I recognize from having waited on at the showroom getting their samples and whatnot. Now I am dressed in a suit and I'm wearing the smock that I wore at Robert Allen. Um, and I am now, from my you know point of view, one of them in the industry. And I figured, well, you know, this is a change of scenery. We're now in this big, grand, historic ballroom in Detroit at this gala and everyone's dressed to the nines. And um, I see some designers who I recognize from the showroom together, uh, in, in, literally in a circle um, with their you know, glasses of wine and their hors d'oeuvres. And so I came up to them with my little glass of champagne and my little <laughs> saucer. And I'm like, hey, you know, like, I know you guys remember me. Hi. I was just so happy to be in this moment with them. Dennis, right. as I approached the group, they saw me coming. And they closed the gaps physically oh, between their no. bodies. They literally turned their bodies in such a way so as to disturb me from coming in. And when I, I got the memo visually, it was like, oh, and my, I remember to this moment, uh, the, sh the champagne in my, in my flute um, jolting a bit. It was like it stopped in my track, like hardcore, because I recognized I was not welcome in this little literal circle. And so I went over and found one of those um, high, high tops with the fabric, you know, the, the drape right. uh, tablecloth, yeah. and just sat there and ate my, my hors d'oeuvres and my dream by myself. And then that was the rest of that night. So what's funny about this to me is I told myself that if I 
I was blessed to reach the top, I would never be that person to other designers. That I would, if I was blessed to climb the ladder of success, I would never pull the ladder up after me. I would leave it down for others to follow. You can't climb on my back to get up there, right. but I'm not going right. to. Right, I'm not, I'm not going to carry you, but right, I'm... I can't carry you. <laughs> But I can right. warn you yeah. as to what rungs are weak, which rungs to avoid, what pitfalls to you know work around to avoid, whatever disasters and mistakes I've made in my career. I wonder, you and I have spoken in the past about what you would want to to impart to design students, for example, that are that are listening to this program. Thing, things that you learned along the way. You, you you just reference some of the some of the mistakes that you made, you know, sort of along the way, and I, I and I get it. Uh, you know, I wonder, I wonder, are there things that you sort of wish you knew earlier on, or 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 what are some of the things when you think about how you would guide people today, and and perhaps even people on your team now? What 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 advice do you do you give? What counsel do you offer? Oh, there's so much. That's such a, a lovely uh, question, and it has so many. Um, so many answers. Um, when I launched my firm, like I said, I reached out to different designers asking them, you know, how do you charge? How do you make a profit? Because I feel like design curriculum, there are different design schools and universities, they focus on, you know, textiles and furniture and, and architectural developments and things of that nature, but they don't really focus on the business of design. How to uh, be ethical. How, how to have good ethics, I should say, how to be ethical as a professional, mm. how to be professional, how to differentiate uh, your, your personal Instagram from your professional Instagram. What is that line of demarcation between those two worlds? Some people are like, I am what I am and just love it or take it uh, or leave it. And some clients are like, okay, I'll leave it. I don't like what I'm seeing on your Instagram. So how do you, you know, draw yeah. that line of demarcation? Um, I, I feel that uh, designers who are coming into this field, uh, students need to take a business class. You know, they need to understand the value of giving the clients what they want and to meet the clients where they are, not where we may want them to be, but where they are today. And that means that a person may have the financial wherewithal, Dennis, to hire a design uh, talent to do their home. But that doesn't mean you have carte blanche to spend all their money however way you, you feel or to pitch to them things that you know they really don't need or materials that are not functional, like putting silk in a bathroom wall that you're just going to get splattered with water for no backsplash. I mean, I've seen people do some really crazy mistake <laughs> and i'm thinking was that a mistake or were you just trying to make a lot of money on your client and gouging them mm. you know and then mm. it brings the entire industry down in the eyes of what is now a very sophisticated and very uh worldly and and, and, and knowledgeable client base you know, this is no longer yeah. this mysterious, you know, um, secretive, secret garden industry that just come yes. and we invite you in. We are competing with all the websites and all the wannabe, you know, decorators that are out there. And so we have to be transparent. We have to be honest. Um, we have to be forthright. We have to have good, solid letters of agreement. Uh, we have to stand by and, and enforce those letters of agreement. Um, and sometimes we have to uh, take a hit, maybe, to produce a, a, a better outcome for the client, right? And um, recognize that perhaps this one project, we may not make as much as we wanted to financially as, as, a, as, a, as a profit, but if we can be honest and do this client the right way as far as you know, handling their business in the proper way, that whatever we may lose in, in, in a profit on this particular job, we can get that on a recommendation or referral to the client, right? And I think that sometimes people come in as if this is the last job I am ever going to have. I have to make my entire year's salary on this one client. And I'm going to give you the worst looking product. <laughs> just make sure I get my my profit share. I mean, I'm just keeping it crazy real for the audience today. Right. <laughs> this stuff happens. Right. I know because my clients have told me about people they yeah. have fired who mistreated them. Uh, so I think for our students, Recognize that, yes, it's a lovely career. It's 
fun, it's beautiful. You get to spend other people's money to make beautiful things happen. <laughs> but with that comes great responsibility. And if you shirk it, if you make bad decisions with other people's money, you only get one reputation in the industry, just one. If it's ruined or cracked, the damage could, could be irreparable. So take it seriously, take it with humility, uh, approach it with a sense of honor and respect for that client uh, and recognize that if you handle them the right way, the sky can be the limit for your career because they can lift you up because all ships rise in the tide, both the client, the contractors, the architect, and you as the designer. And there's my sermon well, on the mount for the week. <laughs> there, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Take those, take those words to heart. Corey has, uh, Corey has brought down the tablets and, oh, and shared them with you. Last time you and I were speaking, we, we could talk about the upcoming book with Rizzoli, but we, we didn't know sort of what it was going to be and how it was going to be put together. But, but this time we can actually i'm i'm excited and and for people that don't know this is going to come out even before Corey's book so you're getting a little sneak peek yeah. into uh into into Corey's book which right now is number one on amazon in the new book category so pre-sales are pouring in Corey obviously has fans around the globe and they are placing advanced copy orders, and and so let's so let's jump and and look at some of the some of the images that you've included in the book, and tell me a little bit about what we're going to start to see as as we go through some of these. Yeah, so this is a uh, historic home uh, that we uh, renovated in New Canaan, Connecticut, uh, and whenever I see this image, I always get a little a little wistful, a little emotional because. This was shot by the great George uh, Ross, a photographer who has shot oh. for Architectural Digest and so many other sure. great shelter publications who we lost very early on in the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, uh, this I is remember. actually, you remember him, yeah, he was a great, a great soul, lovely Indeed. guy, and very yeah. young, very young. I, I don't think, um, I think George had just turned 60 um, shortly before um, this place. So, this is our second to last photo shoot together. It was his idea to open that door. We shot this room with both the front door closed and with the mm -hmm. front door open. Um, but he said, let's get some sunlight in. And so when I look at this photo, I can just hear his gentle guidance as a professional, you know, coursing through this entire photo shoot process. And so I'm really happy with the way how this turned out. Uh, we took, uh, obviously, um, historic, or I'm just, I should say antique uh, furnishings throughout this home and recovered them in more vibrant, up-to-date fabrics, like you see with this chair here, and um, some marbleized um, wall covering by my friend Martin Lawrence Boyard for his collection of Schumacher. Ah, oh, fantastic. So let's see. Okay, so this is this is more of the same house here. So you'll uh -huh. notice that all the doors on this first floor have lacquered purple. And this couple are there is a <laughs> lovely couple, uh, husband and wife in their early seventies, and they got all the kids out the door and off to college and they were like, Listen, we want to you know, renovate this home, but we want this house to feel fresh and up to date. Uh, we don't want it to look dated. And we want something really bold. And so I said, how about dipping your doors in purple paint? And they were like, <laughs> oh, that's definitely uh, what we expected. Uh, so so is, the, is, that one of those, is that one of those classic examples of how the designer makes you think do things that you'd never be comfortable doing otherwise and it, and it works somehow? I mean, yeah, how much. did they respond when you said that to them? Well, the wife, I think, was all for it. I think her okay. main concern was what shade of purple are we talking about? Oh, okay. Green, you know, okay. what, what are we talking about? Yeah. Uh, and the husband was more concerned about just making sure they didn't look cheesy or, ch or chintzy because obviously right. it's not an everyday color you paint French doors. But we did that here and I think they look really, really nice. Um, we also uh, uh, wrapped the walls in this mint colored wall covering. The coffee yeah. table there is. Um, was, it formerly was a black uh, chimrazzeri uh, traditional table with uh, this beautiful uh, um, uh, scene painted on top of the tabletop. And she kind of tired of it and she wanted to sell it. And I said, no, I really like the architectural shape of this table. 
So we dipped it in white lacquer as well. And it almost looks like fondant in a way, you know? Hmm. And I like the, the sculptural nature that it, that it brings uh, to the overall design. Um, and then of course we have the, the flame stitch and other, you know, vibrant colors kind of tied in with the, the fabric story. And this is a view wow. from my Kips Bay 2019 uh, Ladies Library, the Kips Bay yes. Decorator Show House. And um, this is another huge highlight for me as far as my career. And, you know, this was inspired by the uh, one of the original Seven World Wonders, uh, the um, ancient hanging gardens of Babylon. And I wanted to kind of bring this you know, organic motif into this space. We had a soaring 17 foot ceiling. I wanted to take advantage of that. So we wrapped the ceiling with this beautiful um, um, flower and branch motif by Cole and Son. Um, Kravit Lijofa was an amazing partner to, to team up with and collaborate with. These chairs and all the fabrics you see here are courtesy of them. Um, Newell, um, my, one of my favorite antique dealers in New York City, they, they lent me this fantastic um, uh, lotus-shaped kind of chandelier, uh, which was in the early 1920s antique piece there. And, fantastic. Um, yeah, we can see more in the next slide. I think there's more of the room there. Yeah, you can see the front view here. So the, the surround there you, you see um, on the fireplace was original to the home from the early 1920s. and. Uh, the whole idea here, Dennis, was to really pay homage uh, to to women. Uh, I believe that women run the world. They should be running the world. They make a much better decision-making team than we do as men. I'm, I'm with and, you. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so on the floor plan, this was originally designated as the gentleman's study uh, in the 1920s, at a time when women did not even have the right to vote. So when they gave me the space, I wanted to kind of you know, remix it and give it a hmm. new a new moment. And so we made it into a lady library with beautiful uh, pink swirl, blush walls, courtesy of Benjamin Moore, uh, this fantastic uh, snow leopard print um, rug by Stark. I do promise that nothing was killed or maimed in the making <laughs> of the rug. No, uh, no real it, animals were used. No <laughs> real animals were, were used. It was a uh, faux no leopard print. And of course, as I, as I mentioned, great accessories some global views and um, uh, yeah, just Kravit and uh, the Kravit uh, family. So it was just a great um, space that came together. I'm very proud of it. Corey, how, when, when you are, when you're working with clients and this, and this room seems like such a perfect e example of, of this, how, how do you yourself describe? So people always say, oh, Corey Damon Jenkins is he's bold and he's master with color. And how, how do you describe your own work to clients when, when people ask, what, 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 what do you say about yourself? Well, I try to liken myself really Dennis to mortar. And I know that sounds kind of like what, but <laughs> I'll explain it. Um, <laughs> okay. When, when you look at a brick wall from a distance, you see what? You see bricks, right? As you get up closer to the, the brick wall, you see mortar. And mortar is basically holding the bricks together. And so my approach with my clients is this. I look at all of their dreams and aspirations as bricks that are stacked on a pallet. And my job is basically to take those bricks their goals, they want to see their family uh, aspire to be and build something tangible that they can live in. And so I become the mortar that holds those bricks together. The mortar is important, but it's not the main uh, hmm. focal point of the design that makes any sense. So yes, I do want to be known for the, 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 the bright, bold colors and the patterns and the attention to detail. I'm grateful for all of those compliments and, and thank you so much for those. But at the end of the day, what I really <laughs> But want, really, I'm just mortar, really? Yeah, I'm really just mortar. I really want you to stand back and see my clients. Yes. I want you to see their style, their personality. Right. I can tie it together. I can hold it together because they don't know what they know. They know they have these dreams, um, Dennis, but they don't know how to make something out of it. I will do that for you. But when you stand back, I just want to be what holds it together, not the dominant visual. And I think that's why our portfolio is so diverse. We right. work with clients from Shanghai and from Germany and throughout the States and Canada, and they bring to it their own fresh, vibrant, 
uh, outlook on life and what they've been through and what they've lost, their joys, their pains. I can take all of that and make something cool out of it. But I don't want to dominate the visual. It's really, it's their house. I want them to be the bricks, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, well, now, now I do. Now I get exactly what you mean. And, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad I asked because I, because I love that. I love that explanation. So we're going to take a quick break to hear from one of NYSID's alums, actually the distinguished Drew Magookin, our friend Drew. And yes, we love Drew. And, uh, and we're gonna come right back with more from Corey Damon Jenkins, so don't go away, but here's Drew. Hello, my name is Drew Magookin, principal designer for my own New York City-based interior design firm, Drew Magookin Interiors. I'm also a proud NYSID graduate. My commitment to the New York School of Interior Design really stems back to my experiences as a student. I remember that first day in orientation when the president at the time said we were embarking on an education that would become an appreciating asset. Nearly 10 years later, I look back and smile thinking to myself, gosh, he was really right. The school has supported me in every step of my career. They followed me on every step of the ladder up They've promoted my successes. They've celebrated my wins in ways that have given me a presence in the interior design industry. I believe there is something incredibly special about an institution that continues to invest in their students. In addition to fundraising and scholarship building, the Alumni Council is about building a design community of the next generation of interior designers. For me, I believe in interior design as a discipline. I think it's about learning constantly, evolving, elevating, and raising standards to the next level. With your support, this esteemed alumni council can really move forward in a way that builds a foundation of design principles for like-minded interior designers. Join us. Thanks, Drew. And we're back with Corey and uh, fun, fun to see Drew. Uh, I, I, like, I like getting to see Drew. I like getting people popping in and out, you know, during this time. Uh, people you that we have haven't gotten amazing to see hair. in a while. <laughs> <laughs> in, indeed, indeed, and uh, and and a proud nice at alum. So I'm I'm happy about that. So let's get back to images from the book because uh, this this next one that's coming up is actually uh, one of my one of my favorites. And and tell us tell us what we're looking at here. So this is a foyer of a home that we built um, for a client a couple of years ago. And because we got to build this house from the ground up, I, I was able to control all the architectural energy as far as the moldings and the railings and everything. We got to make all of it custom. So I love being able to make things from scratch when we can. Nothing wrong with, you know, getting things from stock, but when we have the opportunity to fabricate something fresh and new, I always enjoy that. So we did that here. Uh, this was the second home that we uh the first home we built for this client, the second project we've done for this client, the first one was a renovation. So a piece of artwork we actually got for them a few years earlier for a renovation of their of their first home. Um, and so we kind of found a new place for it here in uh, this space. And what I love about this is the, uh, the light fixtures. Uh, lighting is like sculpture, it's like art to me uh, in itself. And so I really love the visual comfort pieces here, both on the wall and on the ceiling. Um, they make a statement, and especially when you have lower ceilings to work with, you got to really make that light fixture say something if you don't have the, the scale to do a larger chandelier. So this little semi-flush mount really, I think, did the job. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I, lo I love that, that staircase uh, as well. It's a really, really fun element. Okay. Ooh. So if you are a person that enjoys waking up with a pep in their step, this is the bad <laughs> one for you. <laughs> who, who, who's, who's lucky enough to get to bathe in here? You know, I found that clients usually fall into one of two categories, they're either morning people or they're not. And mm. so certain uh, bathrooms for owners, we design them to be more moodier, more um, uh, understated, so they can kind of gradually wake up. And then some people literally pop out of bed like, yeah, let's get right to work and let's do it. <laughs> And they want a bathroom <laughs> like this. So this was a Minneapolis project. And again, the project uh, 
really called for a, a, uh, a sparky, brighter approach to life with the bathroom. And so this bathroom definitely does that. It wakes you right up. Uh, I am a child of the 60s and the 70s. And so at the time, avocado, avocado green was a big color in the 1970s. And so I decided to uh, have all the millwork here painted in this um, avocado green. Um, you'll in the back of the bathroom, a, a bathtub. Uh, courtesy of DXD, and we wrapped around the tub a concave shaped library, uh, which really uh, showcased the medley of art, towels, and you know bath, you know supplements, and you know soap and things of that nature, as well as books. Um, it's always easier to drop. Uh, it's safer to drop a book in bath water than say your iPad. You know, so I wanted <laughs> to give the client the, the option of good, uh, good, good paperwork. tip there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 The art, the artwork really makes the space. The, the artwork's really, really fun. And it's, it, it, it gives it such energy and, and you sort of get a, a sense of, of, of these people. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a uh, very quirky uh, uh, set of art done by a Detroit based artist. Uh, and it, it's, I think that art is one of those things that makes a statement and it can either be layered on top of each other, like you see here in this space or stand alone. Uh, but Tony Rocco is a longtime friend of mine and I wanted to kind of showcase his work. And uh, he got so many calls for more work like this after seeing this published nationally. And so I was oh, very grateful great. for that. And he got a chance to get showcased with his his broad stroke of his of his of his paintbrush. So that's wonderful. And this oh. is the uh sitting parlor of that same house a uh, little anecdote there if you if you're able to zoom in uh, on this photo if you ever see it online you'll notice on the coffee table um a coffee table book by the great mario block and mario uh -huh. is a friend of mine another mentor that i you know truly looked up to i miss him so much and mario had actually done this home um, back in the 1990s, he had renovated this house, this historic home back in the 90s. Oh. And so, um, so yeah, so he had done it in his classic Prince of Chance, you know, way <laughs> with the swags and the jabot and all the, the beautiful, yes. you know, passementary detail. And so he and I had got dinner in Las Vegas um, um, in 2000, oh, 15, 16, shortly after this project was complete. And we were eating, and I said, um, my clients uh, told me that you were the prior decorator for their home, that the previous homeowner gave them your book as a housewarming gift. And so he said, what was the house? And so I showed him pictures, and he recognized the architectural story here. And then he says, well, wait, wait, what did you do with all my chintz? Where's all the chintz I put in this house? <laughs> and so I said, well... Well, let's just say that there's a very well-dressed homeless person out there <laughs> um, that is dripping with chintz because I threw all of it in the downstream. He says, Corey, what do you oh, mean? There was 60 oh. years chintz in that house. And I said, I know, I know, I know. He said, didn't why know. didn't you call me? Why I did know, <laughs> I know. And I didn't oh. know he had done the house when I got the commission. So that was kept from me. So I can't be held responsible for that which I did yeah. not know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I didn't know that he had done this house. I would, I would have taken some chintz home if I had known that. But um, right. anyways, he, 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 he loved the way the project turned out. He gave me some great uh, compliments, which I you know, greatly appreciate. Um, we have some uh, bergeres here in the foreground that we had uh, upholstered in white uh, patent leather. I needed them to be white for the sake of the color schemes balance and also to be functional for, you know, storage of red wine or spaghetti sauce. And so patent leather is very forgiving along those lines. And uh, we, of course, have the jewel tone story, uh, the sapphire blue and the emerald green and the citron yellow. You know, just wanted to keep the space very bright and cheerful mm -hmm. and, and happy. Uh, and, of course, the uh, white lacquered ceiling, which I think gives the space a ethereal um, effect in this room. Well, it, it's beautiful. I, I one one day I'll have to see the before and after. One day I'll have to see Mario's version. He it was amazing. You know, it's funny <laughs> when I first when I first walked through the space as he had done it, I didn't know he had done it. But I told my staff, I don't know who the decorator was before us, but they were a master of what they did. And I'm glad I said that. Right. Because... <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Even though you threw it all away later, you, know, at least you said that at the time. I did. Yeah. But it was, it was well done. It was beautifully oh. done, as is the that's great. water look. Yeah. That's great. 
Yeah. Yeah. And ah. this is the library. And this is actually the front cover of my new book. Um, and um, this is the space adjacent to the room we just saw. Um, so again, we made a bit of a gamble here, Dennis. We wanted to make a statement and we lacquered all the woodwork with this beautiful Hail Navy uh, color by Benjamin Moore. Uh, that definitely raised some eyebrows when I pitched the idea to the clients. They were like, wait, what? Because most people think woodwork should be stained or whatever, but or painted white, which are traditional right. approaches. But again, doing the remix, we wanted to give it a bit of a spin. <laughs> And so yeah. we, we lacquered it blue and we it's have so the, stunning. It, it just, it just pops right out. I mean, it's, it's powerful. Thank you. Yeah. We, yeah. I was very happy to see it come together. I was happy to see my clients relief when they saw the whole room put together as well. Uh, we had the rushing cloud motif on the ceiling with the, with the cloud cover from the uh, wall, uh, wall covering there. And um, just really trying to mix and match in gray color with the books and the accessories, many of which they already had owned. Um, so it's just a fun space. And I just wanted to feel um, fresh and like a new a new take on traditional. It's it, it's stunning. Thank you. Yeah, this is um, uh, a a home that we built for a client that's actually the literal girlfriend, that literal that, that in relationship, friend, <laughs> you know, bosom buddy as far as away. Got it. Friend, okay. Yeah. The the girlfriend, running buddy of the previous homeowner of the previous home. Uh, she referred me to this woman, her girlfriend they hang out with. And this oh, was the house that wow. Uh, we built for them. And so um, this got the front cover of Traditional Home Magazine back in 2017, I believe. And um, again, a situation where the client allowed me to go bold with the color uh, on the walls, this dark chocolate, almost looks like Hershey Kisses. If you want to just eat the walls, um, that was the intent. Uh, my dear friend, Alexa Hampton, uh, these chairs here in the foreground were designed by her. Um, and, um, you know, bringing in- Friend of Nicid, Alexa Hampton, absolutely. Yes. Who does not love Alexa Hampton? She <laughs> uh, is, how could you not? She's a goddess. I love my girl. She's amazing. Yeah. And, um, and these <laughs> chairs were just the right, you know, choice for this room. And um, to the yeah. right there, you see an antique set that we recovered. Um, so again, it's all about taking, you know, old and new, uh, traditional and modern, mixing it together, light and dark, and making a new a new um, story here. Well, and, and so, uh, you know, in a room like this, Corey, wh what's the first decision that you're making? What, what was it that was it that bold color decision or or what what are you thinking about first as you pull all of this together? Well, if my memory serves correctly, what first inspired this space was the pillow that you see on your right hand side on that settee, and it has okay. a bit of a damask kind of pattern going on, and it has this lime green, chocolate, and white. Uh, color story in the pattern. Uh, and so that was really, Dennis, the touchstone for the entire hmm. palette. From there, I pull everything else out. The client fell in love with that fabric, and I just kind of published that motif throughout the rest of the space. That said, probably the next big choice was the Hershey chocolate brown on the right. walls, because it's such a yeah. bold statement. The uh, rooms are flanking this space are very light and bright. So I wanted this parlor to be a bit more moody and sexy in contrast so it all plays together in one in one uh, cohesive story so let's get to the dining room and uh and look at this shot because it's uh <laughs> yeah i all the, all the light pouring in is so fantastic okay very good thank you so so this is again uh, a spin-off uh space from that kitchen it is called the harvest room uh large big bright windows uh, with the black mullions there and again we wanted to make this space feel functional for the family. They they eat dinner uh, and really breakfast, lunch and dinner here, more so than the formal dining room because it's right off the kitchen, so it's easy to serve. You have a sardine dining table there. It's a centerpiece and this amazing fixture by Urban Electric hanging down center stage. Um, and I like it because it's it's simple. It's, it's, it's less is more. It doesn't have to be all the trim and the detail that I do love, the passementary, all of that is great, but this <laughs> definitely is a bit more paired back. 
And this was featured in House Beautiful. Uh, actually, this house got the uh, front cover of that magazine in March of last year. So uh, we were very grateful to see uh, that. Funny story about that, uh, Joe Sauce, the editor-in-chief there, she shipped out early before she had a chance to tell us we got the front cover. And so <gasps> I met... New York LaGuardia Airport, and I saw the issues on newsstands a week on the newsstand, and you didn't even know out. yet. Oh my god! So, so I'm talking to someone on the oh. phone. I'm like, "Oh my god! Holy crap! I got the front cover. I got to back in all day <laughs> recorded right there on camera." So this, oh. this always have a special place in my heart as the secret uh, front cover story that I wasn't supposed to know about until it came out. So oh, that, that, that's a, that's amazing. How how fun and I. And and Joe Saltz is is so special. Love love her. Joe Saltz yeah. is salt of the earth. That's why I call it. Indeed, her. indeed. Yeah. And this is actually the front cover. This is the um, the the image they use for the front cover. It's the great room, and um, again a nice mix and medley of uh, clean line furnishings, um, the emerald green sofa there again holding center stage in the space. Uh, some great light fixtures, uh, courtesy of arteriors. Um, and I'm just really happy with the way how this couple allowed me to keep things a bit more streamlined and, and more strained. Uh, they wanted to work with me because of the way how we use color in our work, but they didn't want it to be too colorful, too in your face. They really wanted to feel a bit more muted. So um, I'm really happy with the way how this project came together, um, the more restrained take on traditional design. Well, and the furniture pieces in that room are so striking and 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 interesting. Uh, and the, as you say, there it's very it's very clean, um, but there's actually a lot going on. The arms on those pair of chairs are really interesting, and yes. uh, and 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 there's some really. I mean, it's it's one of those images. The more you look, the more you really discover and 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 find. There you 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 work a lot into this, and yet it all looks very clean. Yeah, it's, it's fun also, Dennis, to feature your colleagues' designs in your work when you have a chance. Like, these chairs were designed by David Phoenix. And so I love David. Mm. He has a great collection for Hickory Chair. And so we go to High Point Market looking for what's next and what's hot. But when you have a chance to find your colleagues' work uh, being published or being you know produced by a, a furniture manufacturer, and if the project calls for it's a great opportunity to support your industry because I, I really do believe that all ships rise from the tide. And so to see the, the project, get that coverage of House Beautiful and to see my friend's design, to see his work in my, my work yeah. together. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's like this symbiotic sure. relationship with all the different uh, houses coming together. And I, I really like that. Wow. I, lo I love that. that that's, very, that's very generous of you. This project cool. um, is um, a gentleman's study. Um, he is not a Taurus. Uh, he just <laughs> love bulls. Uh, and I so was wondering, to, okay. I know, everyone asks that, but he is not a Taurus. Um, <laughs> he has an affinity for bulls, and so we had this custom piece of art made by a really fabulous artist, uh, Asian artist out of Shanghai. And um, again, the idea was to celebrate his personal wardrobe. He is always wearing plaids and houndstooth and the whole Ralph Lauren type of, you know, effect. So we have the mulberry on the walls and the plum colored you know, uh, drapery and the paisley and all those different um, uh, elements that make for a very masculine uh, space. And he was very happy. Um, the, the chandelier even has leather straps on it. You know, so it was really designed to give him a bit, a bit of escape from his family uh, to watch sports and to you know, do <laughs> his work at home. So. That's what he asked for. Again, I'm just a mortar. Yes. <laughs> You're just making it happen. You're just making it happen. It's he is the cool. bricks. <laughs> he is the bricks. I love it. This is the sunroom uh, for a project that we uh, built from the ground up. And you'll notice in the tile floor that everything is kind of mismatched as far as the placement of the, the actual tile pieces themselves. It's not your standard pattern. We laid all the tile one way, and then we popped out uh, pieces indiscriminately and put in black contrasting pieces. And there's no rhyme or reason really to it. It's just what it is. So um, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm really happy with the way how things turned out. And here's the, the bedroom for the parents. Um, again, they love that, that pattern play. She, this 
Mm. This bedroom really looks like her wardrobe. She loves wearing big, splashy, um, bohemian, Moroccan, you know, flare patterns. And so we really want to kind of take that story to the next level in the bedroom. So you'll see a nice medley of of Schumacher fabrics here, some really cool wall coverings. And the whole idea here, Dennis, is to not give the eye vertical. You have to be very uh, just how you use the pattern. You can't go too crazy with everything. So for example, mm. uh, she wanted a much more busier carpet for the floor. And I was like, uh, no, we're going to do the walls <laughs> and the pattern, give the eye right. a break. Yeah. And, and she was yeah. very happy with that. You, you, you have to be able to be a partner with your client and say, hey, listen, I know you really want this, but trust me, you're not going to want to burn your money that way because you're going to hate it when it comes out. So <laughs> let's keep this very you know, nondescript. So we kept the flooring a bit more sedated and did a more powerful black and white pattern play on the walls. And of course, nice layer of bedding as well. Yeah, it, it works. Yeah. Huh. This is a flex room uh, for a couple that we worked for in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, this room took on great meaning during the pandemic, Dennis, because they became full-time teachers for their kids because they were now homeschooling during the, the, oh, the lockdowns. Sure. So we designed this, you know, long before the pandemic began, but this is a space that is designed to really beckon children to want to learn. Um, if you do hmm. your research, you find that as a species, we as humans react really well to certain primary colors, specifically yellows, blues, and greens. And so when designing the space, we wanted to use those colors to make this to be an exciting, welcoming um, uh, space to beckon children to come in and want to do their homework and to be creative and to really learn and grow as young adults. And so um, the, the parents kind of the space over in the evenings. They'll have their friends over and have a hot toddy or a cocktail in the same room after dinner. So it becomes like a very purposeful, uh, well, like we call it, it's a flex room. It flexes into different needs um, for the family as the day progresses. That's great. Huh. Uh, this is a formal um, uh, bathroom for the, what we call it the presidential suite for the owners here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting away from calling spaces the master bath. I've been calling them more the presidential suite these days. Yes, I like that um, much better. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it has this really cool uh, Calcutta marble and stone inlay, of uh, uh, photo design on the floor. Uh, it's an inset. The vanities, Dennis, were actually antique uh, pieces that we had converted into full scale plumbing vanities. Um, uh, we had the countertops put on and had the sinks installed, but they were actually uh, pieces of furniture that were freestanding in our previous <laughs> home. So we can repurpose anything with the help of technology and great craftsmanship. <laughs> um, and there is, there is a line that is hidden at the intersection below the transom of that window. It does come down for privacy. So no one's just getting into the tub naked for all the neighborhood to see. I did install blinds. Because that's a big window. I'm thinking, yeah, window. you're, yeah. you're, you're, okay. Um, so, yeah. so something's coming, something's coming down for privacy yeah, there. We definitely okay. have privacy there. It's just not here. Okay. <laughs> that's great. Well, so that, that is an, an incredible sneak peek of, of what people are going to be able to see come uh, March 23rd, if I remember correctly from the, yeah. from the Amazon site. So uh, very, very exciting. And I know that this is something you've been working on for, for quite some time. Yeah. So uh, put it, put it, put it, putting a book together, three years of putting a book yeah. together. Uh, yeah. It's a it's it's a massive massive project. You must be so thrilled that it's that it's almost here now. I am, Dennis. I'm so excited, and it's a little bit different because you know I'm so grateful and blessed of work with Rizzoli on the publication of the book. They were so forthcoming and accommodating. I mean, uh, it's not going to be we covered the the beautiful picture aspect, but the book will be very different in the sense that it covers more about my struggles, what I went through and how I overcame it. Um, it's gonna be a book with pretty pictures, but also a book that will come with some lessons. And I think a lot of times people don't get that with cocktail or coffee table books. They get mm. just the, the great visuals. We put a lot of stories of overcoming and, and, and fighting back against 
um, discouraging depression and, and, and things of that nature. I think that every designer, both those who are established and those who are aspiring can relate to and be encouraged by, uh, again, leaving that ladder down so folks can yes. follow, you know, and, yeah. uh, and, then we, and then we have the pretty photos. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun, lots of sketches and drawings, some how to's, um, how to pick out your, your proper paint color, how to pick out the right wall covering, how to do a, a gallery wall of mirrors and art, lots of how to's and takeaways for every, for every chapter. So they were, Rizzoli was just so good about letting me take it to a different level than your, your standard coffee table book. And I just hope that the masses love it. We'll see. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they look like they're pre ordering it in, in big numbers so far. So it's, uh, it, it, it's very exciting. I'm 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 thrilled for you, Corey. There's there's nobody I'd rather see good things happen for than than you. So I I really I'm I'm so excited about everything that's happened in this past year. And I know some exciting things that we can't even talk about yet are coming for you this coming year. Yeah. So I'm so I'm I'm thrilled for you. And I really appreciate you taking the time to to spend time with us here and uh, and take us through some of your work. It's it's been a pleasure. The honor is all mine. Thank you so much, Dennis, for having me. Um, it's so great to be with you, and I can't wait for us to be able to get together in person. No shade at all the technology, but <laughs> I'm pretty over the Zooms. I'm ready for I, I hear you. at a design uh, mixer. Let's do it again. I miss those things now. <laughs> I I know. I was I was so hoping to be at your book signing event, and I don't know I don't know when one of those are going to be possible, but but Maybe I but fall. I hope. Very, yeah. very, very soon is what I'm hoping. Yeah. yeah. Have to. Well, yeah. thank you again. Please take thank good you. care of yourself, okay? Yeah, stay well. Thanks, Dennis. All right. Dennis. We'll see you thank next you time. Bye-bye. Thank you all so much for joining us for another installment of our Virtual Dialogues on Design series. We're going to be bringing you a new conversation every month throughout the school year. Our guest next month is Susan Zeiss Green, a renowned designer and NYSED graduate. You'll definitely want to tune in for that. My thanks to David Spruels, Drew McGookin, and our guest, the incredibly fun and passionate Corey Damon Jenkins. I'm grateful to our generous sponsors, board members, and subscribers, as well as to our producer, Jeremy Handelman, for making tonight's show possible. I'm Dennis Scully. For everyone here at the New York School of Interior Design, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time.